Let's solve another thermodynamic problem involving work and heat in a closed system. But this problem is going to present us with multiple processes in series. This is a rather lengthy problem. A piston cylinder assembly contains two pounds mass of water, initially at 100 PSI and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The water undergoes two processes in series, a constant pressure process followed by a constant volume process. At the end of the constant volume process, the temperature is 300 degrees Fahrenheit and the water is a saturated mixture with a quality of 60%. Neglect kinetic and potential energy effects. A, sketch TV and PV diagrams showing the key states and the processes. B, determine the work and heat transfer for each process, all in BTUs. Let's lay out our problem storyboard. Uh, schematic shows that we have a uh, piston cylinder assembly containing water, and I've drawn a dashed line uh, to represent the boundary defining the system. So the water molecules inside the boundary are the system that we're going to be evaluating. And here's what we were given. First of all, we know the mass of water in the cylinder is two pound mass. And state one was uh, given to have two properties, a uh, pressure of 100 PSI and a temperature of 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, two independent properties define uh, a state. So we will find that in, in the saturation table at 100 PSI, the saturation temperature is 327.86 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature at this state is higher than that. It's 400 degrees. So that implies that this is a superheated vapor. So we know that the phase of state one uh, to be a superheated vapor. Now let's skip over state two for now because we were given very little about it. Let's look at state three. State three is at a temperature of 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's cooled off a, a bit from the original state and it's got a quality of 60%. So we know that state three is a saturated mixture. Now, what about state two? Let's uh, start back at state one and look at process one, two. It's an isobaric process, meaning it's a constant pressure process. So we know that the pressure of state two is equal to the pressure of state one. The second process from state two to state three is an isovolumetric process, meaning it's a constant volume process. So we know that the volume or specific volume of state two is equal to the specific volume of state three. So we ought to be able to, uh, that ought to give us enough information that we can plot the states or at least come close. So here's the property diagrams. Here's a TV diagram. And we know that state one is at 100 PSI and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna draw a 100 PSI line Here's a constant pressure line at 100 PSI. It would come down like that, okay? And state one is gonna be out here in the superheat region. It's on the 100 PSI line and it's at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So here's state one. Let's go to state three. We know state three is at 300 degrees and we know it's a saturated mixture. So I'm just gonna drop it on this 300 degree line here under the vapor dome. And the saturation table tells us that at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, the saturation pressure is 66.98 PSI. So I know that this, uh, I know this pressure line that drops in on top of this 300 degree um, temperature line, they coexist under the vapor dome. Now, where's state two? Well, state two is on the 100 PSI pressure line. So it's somewhere on this line and it's directly above state three, since the process two, three is a constant volume process. What I don't know is if state two is where I've shown it here as a saturated mixture, it could be that state two is a superheated mixture, say maybe right about here, and that constant volume process follows this path here down to the saturated mixture of state three. Now, because the uh, uh, 
quality at state three is 60%, I'm going to speculate that state two is a saturated mixture. I don't know that. I'm gonna draw it that way, but I'm gonna write a note here that says we need to check the phase of state two. It might be superheated. But if I've drawn it correctly on this TV diagram, then here's how it's gonna look on a PV diagram. 100 PSI is a horizontal line and uh, temperature lines on PV diagrams go down to the right. So I know state uh, one is superheated and I know it's where the 400 degree Fahrenheit line crosses the 100 PSI line. I know the constant pressure process from state one to state two will be on this constant pressure line. And then there'll be a constant volume li uh, line for process two, three down to state three, which is at uh, 66.98 PSI and at 300 degrees. So this is what it would look like on a PV diagram if I am correct about the phase of state two being a saturated mixture. We'll test that. Our engineering model is simple enough. We're dealing with a closed system and we're gonna ignore any changes that might exist in kinetic and potential energy. We'll call both of them zero. And specifically what we wanna find is we wanna find the work and the heat transfer for process one, two, and also the work and the heat transfer for process two, three. Let's evaluate properties for state one and state three before we try to evaluate properties for state two. So let's start with state one. We know it's superheated at 100 PSI and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna to go to the superheat table at these uh, two properties. And I find that the specific volume of state one is given as 4.934 cubic feet per pound mass. And the internal energy at state one is 1136.2 BTUs per pound mass. Now let's go find those same properties for state three. We know state three is a saturated mixture at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna to go to the saturation table at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I find its saturation pressure is 66.98 PSI. And I can get values for V sub F and V sub G and U sub F and U sub G for this saturated mixture. And I added a three to the subscript to indicate that these values are associated with state three. Since I know the quality of state three, it was given as 60%, I can now calculate the specific volume of state three. It's simply uh, V sub F plus the quality times V sub G minus V sub F. And we have all of those values quality is 60% and I have V sub F and V sub G um, from the table. And I calculate that V sub three is 3.89 cubic feet per pound mass. While I'm at it, let's calculate the internal energy for state three. Again, U three is just U sub F plus the quality times U sub G minus U sub F. And once again, I have all of those values from the table and I calculate that uh, the internal energy at state three is 767.8 BTUs per pound mass. Okay, state two, let's find U and V properties for state two. Well, I know that the um, state two results from a constant pressure process from state one. So P2 is equal to P1 and that's 100 PSI. So I'm gonna go to the saturation table at 100 PSI and I'm gonna find that the saturation temperature is 327.86 degrees Fahrenheit. And from this table, I'm gonna get values for V sub F and V sub G and U sub F and U sub G. And I'm going to check now my assumption that state two is a saturated mixture. We know process two, three is a constant uh, volume process. So I know that V2 is equal to V3 and that was 3.89 cubic feet per pound mass. And V2, this value of 3.89 is less than V sub G, um, which I got here as 4.434 cubic feet per pound mass. So because the specific volume is less than V sub G, it is a saturated mixture and it is drawn properly. 
Now I can calculate the quality at state two. The quality is just the specific volume minus V sub F over V sub G minus V sub F. We have all of these values uh, from the table for state two. And I calculate the quality of state two to be 0.8768. And with the quality, I can calculate the internal energy. The internal energy is just U sub F plus the quality times U sub G minus U sub F. Again, we have all those table values. And I calculate that the internal energy at state two is 1006.3 BTUs per pound mass. So now let's calculate the work and heat transfer for each process. The first process is a constant pressure process. And we know that the work for a constant pressure process is just the pressure times the change in volume. And the change in volume is the mass times the change in specific volume. So I end up with the equation that the work for process one, two is pressure at state one times the mass of the system times the specific volume at state two minus the specific volume at state one. All of these values are known to us. I do need to convert some units. I have pressure in pounds force per square inch. I'm gonna convert square inches to square feet. And I end up with foot pounds force as my energy unit. And there are 778 foot pounds force in a BTU. And so the work for process one, two is a negative 38.65 BTUs. Now let's look at the work for process two, three. It's rather simple. Uh, work can always be described as the integral of PDV, but this process is a constant volume process. So dV is equal to zero in a constant volume process. So work done by the process uh, two, three is zero. Now we can calculate the heat transfer for both of these processes. For the first process, um, we, our energy balance is that Q is equal delta U plus W. That's true if we're ignoring kinetic and potential energy. And I can rewrite delta U as the mass times the change in specific internal energy. So I have that uh, the heat transfer for process one, two is the mass of the water times the difference in uh, internal energies from state one to state two, plus the work done by process one, two. Well, I know the mass was two pounds mass. We have a value for U2, a value for U1. And the work we calculated previously as a negative 38.65 BTUs. That um, we can add all that together and we get that the heat transfer for process one, two is a negative 298.5 BTUs. We can write the same energy balance for uh, the heat transfer of process two, three. It's just delta U for process two, three, plus the work done by that process. We had previously determined that the work for this process is zero because it's an isovolumetric process. So the heat transfer for process two, three is simply the mass of the system times U3 minus U2. Plugging in values, we have the mass of the system at two pounds mass, the value of U3 minus the value of U2, we calculate that the heat transfer for process two, three is equal to a negative 477 BTUs.